Hello there friends and welcome! For today's Pathfinder Enhanced Guide we have an updated version of the best arcane spells in the game, that is, spells that can be cast by the wizard, sorcerer, also witch and arcanist classes, even skulls and bards too. Mastering spells is of course essential to winning the game, and the arcane ones can do quite a bit of everything from powerful crowd control effects that hit multiple enemies, together with amazing damage, both single target and area of effect, and of course, great buffs to support your party as well, even instantly killing enemies. So without further ado, let us get into our updated Best Arcane Spells Guide, level by level. Alright, so let's start with our level 1 Arcane Spells. If you're wondering why my character as a sorcerer has so many spells no, it's because I added them in-game, right? Just for the guide purposes. First, well, we absolutely have to talk about Grease, right? It is only, after all, the best, strongest of the early game spells, by far. It's quite stacked with multiple benefits, kinda reminds me of Sleep from Baldur's Gate 1. First, it's area of effect, so it can hit multiple enemies just fine. Second, it automatically bypasses spell resistance. Great for demons, because even the lowliest of demons, even at chapter 1, they do have spell resistance. Third, and this is the best part, the effect. If the enemy fails a reflex saving throw, they'll be knocked down. Prone is one of the best status ailments, right? First, it automatically reduces the enemy's armor class by minus 4 against melee, which is crippling, even early game. Second, even if the enemy gets up, they'll eat an attack of opportunity from all nearby allies. Attacks of opportunity are free attacks. Lastly, this spell has lingering effects, it lasts 1 minute per level, kinda big for an offensive level 1 spell, and every 6 seconds the enemy has to make a reflex saving throw or fall prone again, right, so it procs every round. It really is that good. Second we have Burning Hands, while Grit is the best early crowd control, Burning Hands is definitely the best of the level 1 spells for area of effect damage. At first, it might not seem like much, it's 1d4 points per caster level, but the damage is fire, which is great because it's very easy to increase fire damage, certainly way easier than all of the other elements. Now, the targeting can be a bit tricky because it's a 50-foot cone. By virtue of being a cone, you have to cast it close to the enemy, so ideally you want them to first engage your tanks, right? So you can get them into proper position. For an amazing early level buff, we have Mage Armor, it will increase any character's armor class by plus 4. Note that the type of bonus is actually armor, meaning it won't stack with, for example, Camellia here is equipped with a leather armor that has two base armor class. This value here is the one that counts for mage armor, which means if she was under the effect, she would only get a plus 2, because she already has a base of 2. As you might have expected, Mage armor is best for unarmored characters, most importantly pets, who can't really wear any armor at all. Pets already have great AC values even early game, so when you add mage armor to the equation, well, that's the way to go. And yes, it can be cast on anyone. Lastly, the duration is extremely good as well, 1 hour of real time per level, even at just level 1, it's 1 hour more than enough for anything. Because of this, you might also consider using it from potions and scrolls too. For another great level 1 spell we have Unbreakable Heart. It does increase your character's saving throws against some of the most annoying mind-affecting conditions, but to put it simply, it's the best way of removing confusion from your characters early on. Confusion is extremely annoying, you don't want your characters hitting your own allies. So if any of your party members gets confused, just cast Unbreakable Heart on them. It's especially useful against Vescovor Swarms and also the Derachni Demon Drone ability. For an amazing buff, we have Enlarge Person. Enlarge will increase the size of your characters, which means, first, a plus 2 size bonus to strength. This matters because the bonus type is size, meaning it will stack with other sources of strength, like Enhancement, as I'll soon cover. It does carry a penalty to dexterity, but you know, the characters that benefit from this don't care. Third, it even increases the base damage dice of your weapons. Based on this chart, you can see to the right here. So it is actually dual increases to damage, right? First, from the size bonus to strength, and second, the base damage dice increase. 
Last but not least, it also grants you reach. Reach essentially means you can attack the enemy even at melee range from a longer distance, right? Which of course has many benefits. First, your characters will be at reduced risk of blocking themselves. Second, you'll have to move less when it comes to closing in the distance between yourself and the enemy to attack, which matters in turn-based mode, because if you move too much, you'll lose the ability to make a full attack. And of course, the higher your reach, the more enemies you'll threaten, meaning synergy with feats like Cleaving Finish and Outflank. Hurricane Bow can help early on too. You can only cast this on yourself, so it's mostly to increase your Sorcerer or Wizard crossbow damage. It works on both bows and crossbows, increasing them by one size further, just like the Enlarged Person spell. Protection from alignment, on the other hand, is great mostly because it prevents Dominate and Charm, that is, it's perfect for fighting against the classic Succubus enemies, because you'll then become immune to their most annoying ability. Now when casting this spell, you can choose which alignment to protect yourself from, and ideally you want evil, always. Lastly, for our level 1 spells, we have Shield. It will provide a plus 4 Shield bonus to AC, meaning it won't stack with actual shields, that is, the gear type. Which is fine enough, because wizards and sorcerers usually can't equip shields anyways. So with major armor and shield, you'll have a plus 8 to your AC. While by default the spell is personal only, classes like Alchemist can apply it on allies too. Once again, amazing for pets, dual wielders, two-handers, anyone that's not equipped with a shield. Now let's get into our level 2 arcane spells. First with the animal buffs, bear, bull, cats, owls and also eagle. They each increase one of your main attributes, physical and mental, by a plus 4 enhancement bonus. Ideally, you want to focus on Bo's strength and also Cat's grace. If you are focusing into strength, Bo will increase both your attack rolls and damage, while Cat's will of course provide AC and also attack bonus depending on your build. A plus 4 increase matters a lot early game, because you won't really have many gear that boosts your stats. Certainly not by plus 4 until way later in the game. Second, we have Blur. Blur is one of the best early defensive tools available. It adds 20% Concealment to your characters. Can be cast on any allies, even. Concealment is simple, it's basically a static chance of the enemy missing you, no matter how high or low your armor class is, because Concealment will be applied first. I often say the best way of increasing your defenses is to stack many layers of it, including concealment sources like Blur. While it is true that enemies that can see invisibility, these enemies are very rare and only start appearing way later in the game, and by that point you'll have a way of applying your concealment even against these enemies. Third, we have the newly added Bone Fist spell from the Shifter DLC. It actually works for both offenses and defenses. First, it increases the natural armor class of all characters right, because it's party-wide, by a plus one bonus. It might not seem like much, but this plus one is actually a stacking source of natural armor class, meaning it stacks with everything else, including even other sources of natural AC. Second, it also increases the damage your characters deal with natural weapons, so creature weapons like fangs, bites, claws, and so on. Amazing for pets. False life is great as a source of defense too, in this case, to grant you temporary hit points. Temporary hit points work kinda like an energy shield, in that the enemy has to first reduce your temporary hit points to actually get into your true hit point score. So my character here has 61, which means he would only start taking true damage after the 61 points were wasted. And because of how many sources there are, especially depending on your class, you can achieve quite a big amount. Plus, the duration of 1 hour of real time per level is amazing too. Now let's talk about Glitter Dust, also another one of the best early game crowd control spells. Just like Grease, it is also Conjuration, also Area of Effect, bypasses Spell Resistance, and while Grease knocks the enemies down, Glitter Dust will attempt to blind them based on a will saving throw. Blind is a rather crippling debuff, the enemy takes a mischance against you, just like Concealment, they'll have lower AC and so on. The best part is, of course, it works on enemies that are immune to knockdown, unlike Grease. And speaking about crowd control, another one of the best crowd control effects in the game is Hideous Laughter. 
Just like Grease, it also makes the enemies fall prone, except it will work on enemies immune to knockdown. The only difference is, well, they won't be knocked down, but they'll still be unable to perform any action for the duration. It targets a will saving throw, is of the enchantment school, the school that has the biggest amount of gear that directly boosts its DC. But of course, this spell shines when combined with the best jokes mythic ability that you can get quite early even at mythic 1, which makes Hideous Laughter go from single target to pretty much hitting the entire enemy pack because it will keep on chaining against new enemies whenever you cast it. This combo is so powerful that it actually outclasses all the other further enchantment spells until around Overwhelming Presence at level 9. Mirror Image is another amazing spell for defenses. It grants you some illusory images, and whenever the enemy attacks you, there's a chance of them hitting one of the images instead. As I said, the protection from alignment spell is rather good to prevent charm, and at level 2 we get a party-wide version of it, but at very short duration, one minute only. So be sure to cast this before or right as soon as you spot a succubus enemy. Scorching Ray is another nice tool for early game damage, this time for single target, right? Meanwhile, Burning Hands is for area of effect. You'll fire one ray, plus one additional one for every four levels beyond third, a maximum of three at level 11, and each ray will deal 46 points of fire damage. Very early the spell isn't really that good, right? But as soon as you get two rays at level 7, most importantly three at level 11, that's when the damage really starts shining. And of course, it's fire. Sense Vitals can provide extra damage to spellcasters too, because it will grant you free sneak attack progression, equal to 1d6 for every 3 caster levels you have, or a maximum of 5 at 15. Because of its very short duration, 1 round per level, ideally you want to wait until around, well, level 8 or level 9 to start casting this. Sneak attack damage can matter for casters because Ranged touch spells like Scorching Ray will benefit from it. Burning Hands, however, is not a ranged touch spell, which means it won't get sneak attack applied. If you're wondering about whether the spell is touch or not, honestly just read the description because it will always state it. Last but not least we have Winter's Grasp, another new spell just like Bone Fists added by the Shifter DLC. This spell is, to put it simply, a nice version of Grease. It's the same as Grease, except has a much higher area of effect, double that of Grease, lower duration, however, at one round per level, and well, it also forces the enemies to get knocked down if they fail the reflex save intro, except they'll also take 1d6 points of cold damage per round, and even a minus 2 penalty against spells with the cold descriptor, which Winter's Grasp is, by the way. What this means is this spell actually has a built-in saving throw debuffing effect, right? Also conjuration just like Reason Glitter Dust. Now let's cover our level 3 arcane spells. Starting of course with the best one, Haste. It doesn't matter if your character is focused into crowd control or damage, you'll still want to have Haste. It affects your whole party and grants everyone an extra attack per round, which of course matters a lot. Early game, for example, you are doubling the number of attacks per round you get. The more attacks, the better, always. It even has some minor buffing effects too. It grants you a plus one bonus to attack rolls and even a plus one dodge bonus to AC. Dodge bonuses are unique in that they stack with themselves, just like some sources of natural armor class. And of course, it also increases your movement speed, which is great for moving around the map. Now, haste does have low duration at one round per level, but honestly, it's so good that you want your party members to have it 24 seven. It's a low level spell, which means it's very easy to get many castings of it. And don't forget, you can just use the plentiful Lesser Extend Meta Magic Rods to double the duration per cast. Displacement is another amazing defensive tool. Just like Blur, it adds Consumment, except instead of 20%, we now have a much better 50% Static Miss Chance. Of course, on the other hand, the duration is lower. So ideally you want this before bosses and tough encounters. Now let's cover another damage spell. And of course, we can't forget the ever so famous Fireball. Fireball will deal 1 to 6 points of fire damage per castle level for a maximum of 10. It's not that much damage, but remember, like I said, you can boost fire damage by a lot if you are a character properly focused into it. The main benefit over Burning Hands is the much bigger area of effect 
together with the fact that spell has decent range, so you don't need to be close to the enemies to cast it. Greater magic weapon can be decent too, it used to be better before because you could then apply the bonus you get from it on top of whatever weapon you had, so that it would stack up to plus 5, not anymore. The spell works like this, for every 4 caster levels, you'll grant any weapon you have a plus 1 enhancement bonus, which increases both attack and damage. The difference is nowadays it won't stack with the value your weapon already has, for example my quarter staff is plus 3, which means if I was casting greater magic weapon as a level 12 caster for a plus 3 bonus, it would do nothing. On the other hand, a plus 2 weapon would become plus 3. Because of how huge the duration is, also 1 hour, it's definitely a worthy investment, especially because some weapons like Grave Singer, for example, despite just being a plus 2, are so good that they outclass higher enchantment weapons. With greater magic weapon we can just increase it anyways. 2 plus 5. Protections from Arrow's communal can also help. It lasts 1 hour and protects your whole party against unenchanted ranged weapons. It might not seem like much, right, unenchanted, but a lot of enemies actually carry unenchanted weapons. And some demon abilities like the Vrox Spores, they can get blocked by this. Rage can be decent too, but you have to be aware of its downsides. First, the bonuses. A plus 2 morale bonus to both strength and constitution as area of effect, together with a minus 2 penalty to AC, so don't cast it on tanks. And here's the most important part. Characters under rage will be blocked from using spells, so your spellcasters definitely don't want this on them. Because of the way it works, though, you can just cast it on the allies you want. Ideally to combine it with reach from an enlarged person, so the AC penalty won't matter. And the fact the bonus is morale means it will stack with, for example, size from an enlarged person and the animal buffs. Stinking Cloud is sadly nowhere as good as it was in Kingmaker because the main enemy typing Wrath, Demons, well, they're all immune to poison by default and this is classified as a poison spell. However, early game, until around chapter 3, you also fight a lot of humanoid and coastist enemies, which will fall to this spell just fine. And the effect is quite crippling, if the enemy fails a fortitude saving throw, they'll become nauseated, which means they can't take any action but move. Even if they leave the cloud, they'll still remain nauseated for a while. This does have friendly fire, but as a poison effect, you can permanently make your whole party immune to it anyways by just casting the Delay Poison communal spell. Heroism is a pretty handy buff to have too. It has very high duration even at the early levels, 10 minutes per level, and quite a stacked effect, granting you a plus 2 morale bonus to attack rolls, saving throws, and also skill checks the complete package. Of course, you might prefer to leave it to Scalds and Bards, which are also Arcane Casters, because they get Heroism earlier, but most importantly at spell level 3, an upgraded version of it could hope that also increases damage, together with hitting your whole party. Lastly we have Vampiric Touch. It works, well it does actually deal damage, but you want to use it as a source of temporary hit points because whatever you deal as damage, a maximum of 10d6, will be converted into hit points for you. That lasts for quite a while too, one hour. Now, this is a touch spell, melee touch by the way, which means you have to, well, as the name itself implies, touch the enemy, you have to be very close to them, which can be dangerous for spellcasters like sorcerers and wizards. However, if you are evil enough, you can actually just cast the spell on any ally, right? <laughs> and then proceed to heal them afterwards, as a way of acquiring quite a lot of extra hit points for your character before battle. Alright, now let's talk about the best level 4 arcane spells. Amusingly enough, it seems the higher the spell level, the less useful spells we have. But anyways, Dimension Door can help as a utility spell, mostly during chapter 4 only, because there, you have many areas that can only be accessed by teleporting your party directly to them through Dimension Door for nice loot and secrets. You don't really need this spell before that, just save it for chapter 4. Greater False Life is amazing too, just like the normal False Life, it provides even more temporary hit points, and both spells will stack with themselves, the normal and the greater version. 
As you can see, my character here already has an extra 200 hit points, right? That's close to half our normal hit point score, for a total of higher than 600 hit points as a sorcerer. That's why temporary HP is so good. Greater invisibility is another source of consumement, just like displacement, it's also 50%. This is better used on characters that are ranged, right, amusingly enough, because as far as melee enemies, even if you are invisible and you remain invisible even after attacking under the spell, the enemies can detect and attack you just fine at melee. Not sure why, but that's how it works. On the other hand, because ranged characters won't be detected by the enemy, your ranged allies will always catch the enemy flat-footed for lower AC. It's great for the early game bosses, including the Vescavor Queen at Chapter 2. There's of course the famous Stone Skin 2, a classic wizard buff that can highly prevent damage, but you can use this on any ally. It has great duration at 10 minutes of real time, it's one of the few spells that have a material component, diamond dust in this case, which is easy enough to buy in big amounts, eventually. Any character you cast is on will gain 10 adamantine damage reduction, which means it's only bypassed by adamantine weapons. Enemies don't really have this. So it's essentially 10 points you'll be shaving off every attack for a limit of 10 per caster level, 150. That's a lot of damage prevented, right? Especially useful for unfair and when it comes to receiving critical hits because the damage is only multiplied after it's been reduced by damage reduction. For our last great level 4 arcane spell, we have Phantasmal Killer, quite unique in that it's only one of the two spells in the game, as far as normal ones, that lets you instantly kill the enemy. However, it does have a major limitation, that is, the enemy has to fail their save two times, first a will saving throw, and then a fortitude saving throw to actually die from the spell. Ideally, you want to stack your DC to the max while also debuffing the enemy saves to guarantee this will work. Now let us cover our level 5 spells that aren't that many, unfortunately. First, Echolocation. This is a personal only buff, that is, it can only be used on the caster themselves, unless you are, let's say, an alchemist or a brown fur transmuter. It does have a very powerful benefit, however, it grants you blind sight. To put it simply, it lets you automatically bypass almost all sources of concealment the enemy might have. The duration is amazing too, at 10 minutes per level. There's also the communal version of Stone Skin, better because it hits your whole party instead of just one character, but remember it has much lower duration at just 10 minutes, still plenty enough for most dungeon crawls. Honestly, as far as damage and crawl control level 5 spells, you are much better off using metamagic versions of earlier spells, such as Hideous Laughter, and Fireball. I also already have a full meta magic guide you can check here, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I suppose you could say Mind Fog is also decent, right? It's enchantment and creates a very big area that debuffs the enemy's will saving throw by a massive minus 10 amount if they fail the save, but that's the thing, they have to fail the save first. So I just don't see much of a point into using this instead of just casting Hideous Laughter, right? Because they have to fail the save for both the effects to work, except Hideous Laughter will take them out of the battle, while Mind Fog will only give them a will saving throw penalty. You'll still need to hit them with whatever other source of will based crowd control afterwards. Like I said, not many other great level 5 spells, I'm afraid. On the other hand, some of the level 6 spells are quite good, thankfully. First, we have the mass version of the animal buffs. They do the same and have same duration except, because of the area of effect, they can hit your whole party. We might as well already cover Hellfire Ray, which is the ultimate single target spell in the game for damage. Great for deleting bosses and tough foes. It can fire up to 3 rays, 1 for every 4 caster levels beyond 11 for a maximum of 3 at 19. Each ray is a ranged touch attack, which means it's subject to boosts from sneak attack and deals 1d6 points of damage per caster level for a maximum of 15. So if you hit the 3 rays at the enemy, from a single cast, you'll be dealing 45d6 points of damage. More of course when you consider meta magic and all other sources of extra damage boosts, because they apply separately for each of the individual ray ticks. Half damage is fire and half is unholy, unholy is fine enough too, 
because even evil enemies don't resist it. And as far as fire, you have ways of bypassing the enemy's immunity against it, like the Ascended Element Mythic ability, or the Bane of Spirit Ring. Speaking about damage spells, Chain Lightning is quite respectable too, as a source of area of effect damage. It's 1d6 points of caster level against any enemy. Now, this spell is unique in that it's one of the very few non-mythic spells that is uncapped, that is, the higher a caster level, the more damage you deal. I know it says maximum 20d6, but that's a lie. Hopefully it stays this way, because it's one of the few spells, like I said, that can compete with mythic spells. Note that the damage type is electricity, and demons are all immune to it, but like I said with fire, you have ways of bypassing that. Greater Dispel Magic is amazing for debuffing the enemy too. Most of the powerful enemies in Wrath are only powerful because they come with a lot of pre-buffed effects, and Dispel Magic is a way of removing that. Be sure to always go for the single target version only, as opposed to the area, because the area version only dispels one effect from all enemies. Single target, however, can dispel quite a lot of effects, depending on your caster level. One per four caster levels you have. Sure, you have to pass a check here, but the higher your caster level, the higher the chances when compared to the enemy. Transformation can be quite helpful too for the fighter mage type of characters that want to fight at melee. It has a very unique effect of setting your base attack bonus equal to your character level for a maximum of 20. What this means is, my character here is a combo of two low base attack bonus classes, Crossbutta Sorcerer and Lore Master, which means even at level 20, I only have a plus 10 to base attack bonus. If I were to cast Transformation, however, it would then become a plus 20, which of course means much higher AB, but especially more attacks per round too, and even higher damage if you have power attack or piranha strike feats. Now there is a downside to this, just like the Rage spell, this will prevent you from casting spells. However, the duration isn't that high, and depending on your type of character it doesn't matter, I mean, fighter mages usually just want to buff themselves and then attack the enemies, so it's not like they'll be casting spells in battle, if you know what I mean. I might as well mention Dragonkind 1, because it's the first spell that lets you turn into a dragon, which can be quite fun. Dragon form can grant you a lot of extra attack spell round, regardless of your base attack bonus, together with decent stat bonuses too to physical scores. And because dragons are innate spellcasters, you can still cast your normal spells under dragon form. You can even choose the dragon form you'll take, but that's just a pellet swap, they all have the same stats, right? Just note that your usable items will be blocked under dragon form, which means you can't use meta magic rods. As far as level 7 spells, not that many great ones. Mostly Legendary Proportions, one of the ultimate buffs in the game. Just like Enlarge Person, it also provides you a size increase except double that of Enlarge, for even higher reach and base weapon damage. The stat bonuses are also much bigger, plus 6 size to strength, even a plus 4 size to constitution, and lastly, a plus 6 form bonus to natural armor, even damage reduction 10 to adamantine, just like stone skin, it's quite the stacked spell. Because of the secondary properties of higher AC and constitution increases, it can also be good for tanks unlike an large person. The spell does have a material component cost too of dinosaur bones, they aren't as plentiful as diamond dust, on the other hand, whenever you cast it from a scroll, you won't have to pay the material cost, which means it's a great choice for, for example, Nanyo, when you're camping inside, well, anywhere with Nanyo as a party member, or in Dresden, because then she won't have to be on your active party to still scribe the scrolls for use later. You just have one limitation, mostly of not working on undead allies, which is kind of a bummer for Lich, because of how great the spell is overall. Ice Body is another great defensive buff too, it has many stacked effects. First, it makes you immune to cold, vulnerable to fire damage, which means you take extra from it, doesn't matter, there are many ways of granting you resistance. But here's the best part. Immunity to ability score damage, blindness, critical hits, disease, drowning, electricity, poison, stunning, that's quite a lot, mostly against critical hits and sneak attack, 
together with ability score damage, which is very annoying. Do note that now it's classified as a polymorph spell, which means you won't be able to use it with other polymorph types, like the dragon transformation spells. It does work with legendary proportions, however, which is not polymorph. Now let us cover level 8 spells, mostly about buffing here, first with Frightful Aspect. It has some similar bonuses to legendary proportions in that 1. It also increases your size by 1 step, just like an large person. Legendary is by 2. Second, also gives size bonuses to strength and constitution and to natural armor class. But anyways, the most powerful part of this spell is the fact it gives you a fear aura. With quite great range to of 30 feet, creatures inside the aura will be automatically shaken. Right? This doesn't have a save, doesn't have spell resistance, it doesn't matter how powerful the enemy is, unless they're immune to fear, they will be shaken by this. Which does matter, well, first because shaken reduces the enemy's attacks and saving throws by minus two. But most importantly, shaken also has amazing synergy with the shatter defenses feat, which is why I usually pick it with my characters at level 15. Also the same point most characters would be able to cast Frightful Aspect as a level 8 spell. And while Shattered Defenses will make any Shaken enemies automatically flat-footed to your attacks, which means way lower AC. For another amazing defensive source we have Cemento. It gives quite a hefty bonus to armor class, plus 8 cover bonus, a very rare type that stacks with everything else, even a plus 4 to Reflex too, together with Immunity to Fire. Now, enemies that are under freedom of movement effects will be able to bypass this extra source of AC, but that's super rare, most enemies don't have this. As for Storm Bows, it can work as a decent source of damage, because unlike most damage spells, it's 1d8 instead of 1d6 per caster level, and even has a built-in crowd control effect if the enemies fail the fortitude saving throw, they'll become stunned for one round, very good. Lastly, it only hits enemies, but is centered on you, just like an aura, so you need to be close to the enemies you cast. Mind Blank is quite the handy spell to have too. First, it gives you a plus 8 resistance bonus against mind affecting spells, decent enough. But here is the best part, this spell was patched to actually let your party members still benefit from concealment sources like Displacement and Greater Invisibility, even if the enemy has True Seeing or Seeing Visibility. Like I said, because of how useful Concealment is, who doesn't love a static mischance? Combining it with Mind Blank is one of the ultimate ways of achieving the ultimate defenses. Now at last we are at the level 9 spells, the ultimate spells in the game. Unfortunately, they don't quite live up to their reputation. I mean... <laughs> In games like Baldur's Gate 2, the level 9 spells are truly, you know, gameplay ending, world destroying, massive tools of annihilation. Not so much in Pathfinder, I suppose they left that for the mythic spells. But anyways, we have some nice picks here. First, Fiery Body. It's pretty much almost the same as Ice Body except for Fire, and also grants you the same immunities, together with even letting your character be healed by fire damage, instead of just immunity and also a plus 6 enhancement bonus to dexterity. Like I said, it's mostly for immunity to ability damage and critical hits plus sneak attacks. Heroic Invocation is another amazing buff, lasts for a big amount of time, and the bonuses are plus 4 morale to both attack and damage, together with immunity to fear, charm, and even a slight amount of temporary hit points. It's mostly all about the morale to attack and damage. Speaking about nice buffs, we also have Foresight. First, you can never be caught flat-footed under it. Great to ensure your character will remain with high AC if the enemy acts first. Lastly, it also grants you a plus 2 Insight bonus to armor class and reflex saves. Insight bonuses to AC are rare, so it's nice to have this, together with the good enough duration. Mind Blank Communal is amazing too, like I said. Mind Blank ensures your characters will always benefit from consumer sources, Except the communal version hits your whole party for more than enough, 4 hours of real time. Shape change, well it lets you change into any of the spell shapes in the game, not the mythic demon or the shifter ones. 
It's mostly another way of getting, let's say, the ultimate dragon forms. Kinda disappointing, right? Because in Wrath, shape change is like a best hits spell, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, in Baldur's Gate 2, once again, we have very fun forms. Even in games like Neverwinter Nights 2 with Baylor, Horn Devil, Fire Giant, and so on. We can't, of course, forget Weird, the ultimate instant death spell in the game. It is essentially an area of effect version of Phantasmal Killer. If they fail the two saves, they'll be instantly killed. Just like that. Even if they pass the save at least the Fortitude secondary one, they'll still take minor damage and most importantly be stunned for one round. The spell is great when combined with the Grandmaster's Rod, because by default it's a fear and mind affecting spell, so enemies immune to these effects wouldn't be viable targets for weird like some of the late game bosses and enemies. With the Grandmaster's Rod, however, we automatically bypass that. Overwhelming Presence can help us crowd control too, which is the ultimate enchantment spell in the game, because unlike, let's say, meta magic versions of Hideous Laughter with best jokes, Overwhelming Presence still has an effect even if the enemies make the save. First, if they recover early from the spell, that is, they survive for one round but later make the save because this keeps forcing a save every round, just like Reese and Hideous Laughter, they'll be staggered for quite a lot of time and take Wisdom Drain, which increases the chances of you hitting the enemy with further enchantment will save intro effects. But lastly, even if they make the initial save, they'll still be staggered for one round, so unlike Hideous Laughter it has effects even if the enemy saves. Well, alright friends, so this was it for the best arcane spells in Wrath of the Righteous level by level. I certainly hope we get more spells, I think the next DLC is going to add some, as far as I've heard anyways. Here's hoping we get more ultimate level 9 spells. As always, if you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member. I truly appreciate your support, thank you for watching, see you next time friends, of course with the divine version of the best spells updated for the latest patch with the best cleric, oracle, druid and shaman spells.